course, tonight marks the final presidential debate. Uh, President Trump and uh, Democratic nominee Joe Biden will be taking the stage. And one key issue here is boiling down to how both candidates will be connecting with the Latino vote here in the country. Of course, Latinos, the nation's largest and fastest growing contingent of non-white voters. It's going to be a, uh, it's going to be a big swing factor here in some key swing states, including Arizona. One worth watching here. Outside of Bill Clinton's win in 96, it's voted Republican every year since 1952. It was a state that President Trump won by just 3.5 percent. So that Latino vote uh, could be a big swing factor. And here to join us to break that down uh, is Maria Teresa Kumar, the CEO and co-founding president of Voto Latino, the nation's largest Latinx voter registration organization. Uh, and Maria Teresa, before I first ask you about what you've seen play out here in the energy in registering Latino votes and what that's looking like here in 2020. Yeah, well, thanks for having me, Zach. I think what, what's interesting is for the first time, Latinos are going to be the second largest voting bloc, and they are going to be the second largest voting bloc because you have so many young Latinos aging into the voting population. What I mean by that is that we have 4 million more young voters than in 2016 that are going to be all of a sudden eligible to vote in, take this, Nevada, Colorado, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, Georgia, Arizona, and Texas in ways that we have never seen before. So these states that have solidly been either swing states or solidly red states all of a sudden have an opportunity of flipping because of an aging in population. And we should note Voto Latino came out and endorsed uh, Joe Biden back in April. Um, but a lot of critics have pointed out that he has not necessarily connected in terms of support levels uh, where a lot of people hoped it would be. Uh, roughly in par with Hillary Clinton back in 2016, but some people say that's not strong enough. What do you guys say? Well, the reason we, uh, this, first of all, it was the very first time Voto Latino had ever endorsed a presidential candidate, and it has a lot to do with the issues that the Latino community has suffered under, sadly, under this presidency. We are 20% of the population and 35% of the COVID fatalities and infection rates. 50% uh, of Latino community has lost their jobs or seen their hours reduced. 20% of Latinos, sadly, don't get access to the CARES Act, even if they're American citizens, if they lived with an undocumented loved one. And so we felt that the issues that are impacting the country, in particular the Latino community, was important to talk about how Biden would be so starkly different for the community versus Donald Trump. The reason that we're seeing a softness in the Latino community when Joe Biden first uh, became the nominee was because the presidential election has fundamentally changed on how one campaigns. You usually see the presidential candidates out there in the communities hugging babies. Uh, a little hard to do it under COVID, but what you are seeing now is uh, the Biden campaign back on the road. You're going to see a major deployment over the weekend of Julian Castro uh, in Nevada, in Colorado, in Arizona that you mentioned. And then the last week, you're going to see Biden is heading out to Florida right now. Again, understanding that the way he gets over the top is going to be through the Latino community if they show up. If there is one area of strength that we have seen President Trump have with the Latino community, it has been younger male voters. Uh, what do you attribute that to? I think one of the major reasons that we're seeing is a lot of uh, young Latina. Well, I, actually, I don't see a, I don't see it with a, a long ma young male voters. It's been mostly older male voters that we're seeing it through through our data, and it has been specifically around the lines of business and choice. One of the things that we've been having conversations with is uh, if you're found profoundly Catholic, you're or uh, anti-choice. It's a hard harder move because it's religious based. But on a lot of the business front, folks are very much married to this idea of uh, the payroll tax. And one of the things that we've been communicating to the Latino community is that while the payroll tax sounds nice in the beginning, when you realize that it is investing in Social Security and in your uh, Medicare, for the Latino community, oftentimes that is a, your retirement plan and that is your health care plan. So it's the ability to really peel back, the, peel back the layers of what policies mean and how they impact them disproportionately in the Latino community. Yeah, it's interesting because we had seen some polls uh, noting that the strength was there in younger male voters. Uh, Unidos poll as well looked at the strength right now for Biden in some of these key swing states. When you look at Arizona, I just want to highlight 67 percent in terms of preference among registered Latino voters there. Um, do you think that's going to be strong enough to swing it? Uh, because obviously uh, he won Arizona before. So talk to me about that. I'm sorry. Do you read the last one? You cut, I couldn't catch you. In Arizona question? right now, <laughs> Biden's showing about 67% to Trump's 23% in 
in uh, Latino, registered Latino voter support there? Is, is that going to be strong enough to swing that state? It was so strong enough to make it purple when it came to the midterm elections in Arizona. And I have to share with you the amount of mobilization that you've seen among young Latinos aging into the population in Arizona, not only made it purple in Arizona because, and brought uh, the Congresswoman into uh, into the Senate, but more interestingly is that you see a young group of Latinos running for office and winning. And that was the same pattern that you saw up in Nevada and earlier you saw in Colorado. And you're starting to see a very similar pattern of young Latinos really making a case for themselves and winning legislative offices in Texas as well. So I would encourage us to see about that you're seeing this new coming of age in the Latino community because we have so many young people coming of age and basically standing up and wanting to not just vote but run for office. Hey investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up to the minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance and information on how to manage your money every day wherever you are.